poison hemlock is a plant you do not want to get a foothold on your property. It is an aggressive, toxic, invasive species that can produce up to 40,000 seeds per plant in its short life cycle. In this video, I'm gonna show you the most effective ways to control poison hemlock, no matter if you own a residential property or have several acres in a rural area. Let's go take out some poison hemlock. Any method used for controlling poison hemlock works best when the plants are in the rosette stage before they start to bolt and produce flowers. Hopefully you'll get the poison hemlock dealt with before it gets to that point. But if not, I will show what to do towards the end of the video. It's good information to have regardless because you're gonna miss a few no matter how thorough of a job you did. The first method is pulling or digging the plants up and it works best for small infestations of poison hemlock for reasons that will be quickly apparent. It is also the simplest method and the cheapest, but it does have a few drawbacks. For this method to be effective, as much of the taproot as possible must be removed. In softer wet soils, this may be easily achieved by simply grasping the plant at the base of the rosette and pulling until it comes free. In heavier clay soils or soils with rock in them, a shovel will have to be employed. This Radius Pro stainless transplanter is by far my favorite shovel for transplanting out nursery stock, moving and dividing plants in beds, and for taking out troublesome weeds. We do not have product sponsors here on the Backyard Ecology channel, so if I recommend a product, it's because it's something we use and like. I will put a link in the description if you would like to get one for yourself. Removing poison hemlock by hand can be a labor-intensive endeavor if you have more than just a few plants. Another drawback of this method is the plants may re-sprout if enough of the root remains after the plant is pulled. But by far the biggest drawback to manual removal is the soil disturbance it causes, especially if a shovel has been used. Disturbed soil enhances the chances of dormant poison hemlock seeds germinating and recreating the problem you are trying to solve. The seeds can stay viable for at least six years, so it can take a bit of time to exhaust the seed bank if the soil is disturbed every time you pull new plants. If you are extremely lucky, you got the first poison hemlock that colonized your property. In that case, you may have fast success. If you hate invasive species but love native plants, please be sure to pollinate that like button. A quick word of warning about pulling poison hemlock by hand. Poison hemlock is deadly poisonous in all parts of the plant, leaves, stalks, flowers, seeds, roots, and sap are toxic. While the toxic compounds cannot be absorbed through the skin, they can be absorbed through the eyes and mucous membranes. Always wear gloves such as heavy duty nitrile disposable gloves, I'll put a link in the description for some, while pulling poison hemlock. If a glove tears, replace it before continuing to pull the plants. When done for the day, dispose of the gloves and thoroughly wash your hands. In addition, if you are in an area where children, pets, or livestock could encounter the pulled plants, dispose of the pulled hemlock by bagging and placing in the trash. The toxins in poison hemlock stay deadly after the plant dies and dries out and can remain so for up to three years. The second method for controlling poison hemlock is spot spraying the rosettes with a low volume, low percentage active ingredient herbicide application. If you are dealing with a large infestation or a large area of land, this is the best option for dealing with poison hemlock. It also has two major advantages over manual removal. If the herbicide is applied correctly, the poison hemlock will be killed and there is no resprouting. And there is no soil disturbance to induce poison hemlock seeds in the seed bank to germinate. As I am demonstrating, a proper spot application targets just the poison hemlock rosettes you are trying to eliminate. The spray should be applied to the point where the foliage looks wet, but the liquid is not running off. Any more than that and you are just wasting herbicide. Since the herbicides I am going to recommend are not soil active, meaning they must land on the foliage to be taken in by the plant. Also remember to wear closed toed shoes. I prefer rubber boots, long pants, long sleeves, and chemical resistant gloves while handling herbicides and when applying them. PPE is your friend. There are many herbicides that will control poison hemlock, but before I get into choosing a herbicide, please remember that you must read, understand, and follow the label. It is the law. If you have never used herbicide or you find herbicide labels to be confusing, I offer a web class periodically on how to understand herbicide labels and also herbicide basics. If this is a class that sounds of interest to you, please comment below. Rather than recommend specific herbicides or formulations, 
I'm going to outline what properties a herbicide for poison hemlock control should have. I'm doing this because availability and legality of herbicides varies widely state to state. Herbicide for poison hemlock control in the rosette stage should be a broadleaf selective, meaning it only kills broadleaf weeds, or a non-selective, meaning it kills all types of plants, systemic herbicide with no ground activity. Having no ground activity helps mitigate damage to nearby plants since any overspray that does make it to the ground will not be taken up by the roots of those plants. By focusing on spot spraying the individual rosettes, overspray is greatly reduced anyway, but I still prefer a non-ground active herbicide for spot spraying. Since the best time for controlling poison hemlock is late fall through early spring, there usually isn't much else green and growing to worry about impacting. None of these systemic foliar applied herbicides are going to kill poison hemlock overnight. They must be absorbed through the green portions of the plant and then translocated throughout the plant from leaf tips to root tips to do their job. It takes time for this to happen from seven to 14 days usually. So be patient. Also make sure you are applying herbicide within the temperature range that is stated on the label. If it is too cold or too hot, the herbicide may not be effective. Do not spray if it is going to rain as it will wash off the herbicide. All herbicides have a rain fast time after which the herbicide will not be washed off of the plant. The label will have this time listed on it. Whether you use manual or chemical control on poison hemlock, be aware that seeds can germinate at any time of year so new plants may pop up. Go out and periodically patrol the areas you remove the hemlock from to check for any late germinating seeds or seeds that germinated due to soil disturbance. You went out and cleared all the poison hemlock off your property only to go out one day and see a towering, gigantic, full flower poison hemlock. Oh no, what do I do now? You can still stop it from setting seed and end its short life. Simply cut down the flower stalk. I recommend a machete, brush ax, sickle, or similar hand implement. The reason for this is a weed whacker or mower is going to throw bits of poison hemlock, and especially sap, everywhere. Poison hemlock is a juicy plant, and you don't want that sap flying everywhere. It's toxic, remember? If enough plant bits and sap get into the air, it can even be inhaled with dire consequences. Have I said this plant is bad? I would also recommend pants, long sleeves, gloves, and eye protection since the toxins can be absorbed through the eyes. Bag and remove the cutoff flower stalks since they can still set seed if far enough along in the process. Even after being cut off, you do not want that to happen. Check back on the plants you chopped in a week to make sure they didn't have enough energy to send up more flower stalks. They rarely do, but it does happen occasionally. Perhaps you're thinking, I really want to get rid of poison hemlock if I have it on my property, but I have no clue what I'm looking for. Got you covered. Go watch this video right here. Come back and watch this video for review and be sure to get out and explore nature in your backyard.